Hello. Ah, it works. Okay, I'll use the microphone. So welcome, everyone. It's, a, it's great to see such an amazing crowd, and it's uh, not a surprise given uh, the guests we have with us today. So if you have any interest in urban matters, you will now know that the city of Mendine, Colombia, has undergone a really a startling transformation in the last 15 or 20 years. Uh, in the 1980s and 90s, uh, the name Mendine was often associated with fear. Fear of violence, fear of drugs, fear of terrorism. But in the 2000s, Mendine took a dramatic turn for the better. And in 2012, it was actually selected as the innovative city of the year in a survey organized by the Urban Land Institute and the Wall Street Journal. And today it is still featured amongst some of the most forward thinking and looking cities. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce two very important actors in this transformation that are with us today, both with uh, long and distinguished careers and bios. So I'm not gonna go through all of that. Francisco will fill in the details. But briefly, we have Mendine architect Alejandro Echevera, who is co-founder and director of Urbum, which is the Center for Urban and Environmental Studies in Mendine. Uh, there, he combines architectural, urban, and environmental projects and planning. Uh, between 2004 and 2008, he, as the then city director of urban projects, he led the social urbanism strategy, and you see he's going to talk about that today, to improve some of the most impoverished neighborhoods in the city, making Mendine a kind of case study, a blueprint for uh, looking at future cities and their transformation. Uh, you know, distressed cities that are dealing with the same issues, and many of which we have here in the United States. Since 2010, he dedicates himself to the urban, environmental, and social issues of emerging developing countries, uh, particularly those with weak policies, uh, weak markets, and weak institutional structures. So welcome, Alejandro. We also have Alejandro Restrepo, who's also an architect in Mendellin, and currently a doctoral candidate in engineering architecture at the Technical University in Munich, TUM. I just got back from Munich. What a great city, especially when Oktoberfest is running around. Uh, uh, he's also a, a research ambassador of the German Academic Exchange Service in Colombia. He's currently the director of urban projects for the city of Mendine and professor there at the university. His architectural and urban planning offices have numerous important commissions uh, at different scales across Colombia, Panama, uh, and Mexico. And his research is in the area of urban planning, architecture, and construction techniques in relationship to sustainability. So please join me in welcoming our esteemed guests. I'm actually not Alejandro or Alejandro. Uh, hi. Uh, as you know, as you probably know, uh, we are running a visiting critic studio with the theme of Medellin, and that's the reason why we are organizing this lecture symposium. Uh, both Alejandro's and a third friend, Jorge Perez, who unfortunately cannot be here with us today, uh, will be acting as uh, tutors, consultants, and, and then host as we plan to visit the, the city of Medellin uh, in late November during the Thanksgiving break. Uh, this is made po possible by the support, uh, general support of the uh, Todd Rubin uh, Fund and, fam and, and his family. Uh, this is a support that started uh, about seven years ago. Uh, for the first time, we actually went to Copenhagen to with a group of students sponsored by Todd Rubin uh, to visit the city, to learn from the city, to get students the opportunity to travel abroad and get in touch and experience directly uh, different cultures. Since then, the Rubin Studio has been has traveled to Azerbaijan, Amsterdam, Oslo, Argentina, uh, and uh, well, now into Medellin and Copenhagen. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite fitting to have started with this sort of perfect city called Copenhagen when everything works so beautifully and well. 
and end up with this very imperfect city called Medellin that, as been said, uh, came from being uh, one of the most, actually literally being the most dangerous city in the world to becoming uh, one of the example of, of innovation in architecture and urban design as much as in, in political uh, processes. Uh, particularly for us, it's, it's uh, remarkable and it's interesting the way that architecture and urbanism uh, played such a significant and central role in fact, was the very mechanism by which uh, all the, this process of transformation that was much beyond the form of the city uh, took place. So it's, it's great pleasure for me to be able to host uh, this event. It's uh, a great pleasure to have two old friends uh, with us today to share this experience. And, and it's an honor to have with us uh, Todd Rubin, who is the person who supported and makes possible uh, this event. So thank you very much. With that, I'll just pass it to Alejandro. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I think it works here. The, the front light, please, is you, the opposite, it's okay, like this, it's okay, I think it's okay, it's okay. Huh? It's okay, yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> so, um, thank you very much, um, it's an honor to be here in the Syracuse University, and I would like to thank uh, my close friend, Francisco Sanin. Uh, I, prom yo prometo, I promise you that I, I promise. I, promise. <laughs> I, I'm not, I am not going again to show the picture that I showed yesterday. <laughs> so, most of you uh, don't, uh, because we, we were here yesterday night and I did a previous presentation. So I, I am going to introduce um, some aspects and ideas uh, that I already explained yesterday, but my, the content today will, will be more focusing urban and architecture specifically. So some images from the beginning could be the same, but I, I, I will I will change a little bit with I move forward to the to the talk. So thanks as well to, to Mr. Todd Robin for support the, the, the studio and for us in Medellin it's really important to have your mind, your interest and your visit. We will we will I, I hope that and I'm sure we will enjoy and, and take an advantage of the work that you developed this year. And as of course, we will have some interest debates in, in Medellin as well. <clears throat> so I showed this image yesterday only to, to, to explain and to, to share some ideas that those two images are completely the opposite. The, the left one belongs to the living room of Jose Luis Sert in 1950 in Boston. Jose Luis Sert was the dean of GSD, but he did the pilot plan for Medellin, and the, the main board on the, on the wall was the image of the plan of Medellin at that time. And this opposite image is an image that belongs to the 2002, uh, when we had a real war in the city. So the national government and the army bombed some barrios of Medellin, trying to solve some problems of, 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 uh, of uh, narco business. And so it's a combination of violence that is hard to explain because it has a lot many layers. So these two images represent as well opposite ideas, the abstraction, the idea of the, of the planners and the people that trying to imagine how the, the city could be and define the limits in, 2000, in one, 1950, I'm sorry, 
and which areas could be protected to develop some green corridors and so on. But the history happens very fast and change from three, 300,000 inhabitants at that time to more than 3 million in, the, in 2000 as well. So it's impossible to plan a city like that. But this combines with a very complex and social problems. So the question in 2000 was how to recover the confidence and the public space, how to recover the capacity to mobi the mobility in the city, how to recover as well some spaces and buildings and programs that recover the civic behavior and, and as well to trust to each other. So the public space and the architecture start to be one of the biggest tools in that transformation. <clears throat> so Medellin is, is, is like all other Latin American cities and, 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 and other cities in the world, has two or three completely different histories in the city. So 40% of the population belongs originally to informal occupation. And 60% of the population in different social classes and so on belongs to the formal areas. So this image is a proposal and the axis of the river that later on and maybe six years ago, the municipality did a competition and now it's, it's going on. But the challenge as well is what could we do and how we could improve and reconnect the city with those two realities as well. <clears throat> Medellin is located here in the center of of the, of the corridors of the Andes Mountains, Colombia ha, is a, has a very strategic location that links the Caribbean and the Atlantic with the Pacific at, as well as the end of the Amazon and is the end of the corridor of the Andes as well. So in terms of diversity of birds, is number one I told you uh, in, in diversity of birds, for example, in the world. But our region belongs to the mountains. So all, not only Medellin, our region, that Medellin is the capital, the name of the region is Antioquia. So we are montañeros, that means mountain mans. It's in English, I don't know. <laughs> so we, we love to, to go up and to go down, and we don't know how the horizontal, the horizontal line is, because we, it's impossible for us to see the horizontal line in a linear way. So Medellin has a 3,500,000 inhabitants and uh, I'm not going to explain detail but we have we have like a tragedy it's a very narrow valley once one mountain in the east one line of the mountains to the west this is the channel of the river and, and has a lot of ravines or creeks that goes to both sides both sides of the mountains so I am going to explain to you the, the majority of the processes and the urban transformation that when we were in the government, uh, work with belongs to the north east and northwest part of the of the area that used to be informal, but now the consolidation happens in the middle until the middle of the hill, and as well we have an active occupation that I am not going to talk today, and I am not going to talk about my work today uh, in search center and so on because the idea is to explain to you mainly the process that we lead when we were and I was in the government. So <clears throat> this, is the, this is the map of the, of the metropolitan area and the valley. So the municipality of Medellin is like this and we have another municipality, municipalities that reconnect the valley. We have this axis that is the river and all the creeks that goes and cross uh, the valley and, and so on. So if you if you want to understand the, keys, the key factors and the, as well the, the future opportunities in relation with urban, uh, urban uh, problems and as well possibilities, you must say that the access of the river today is an amazing opportunity of renewal areas, redefine infrastructure, reconnect the city as well. But the challenge that we have on the hills, in the upper part of the hills, with the social problem, the inaccessibility and so on, is really, really amazing. But as well, you could see that there are some opportunities in the, in the upper part of the hill. So those two realities are the extreme, the extreme condition of the city. <clears throat> I must say that 
that we, ha we had a tragedy in Colombia and we had a tragedy in, in, in Medellin. In 1991, Medellin was the most violent city in the world, by far. So this is 1991. This is 213, we are in 217 here. It's not a, uh, so I lose some years in the, in the. <laughs> so, but this image could represent a beautiful, as well, some, uh, and the tragedy as well. Uh, Fernando Botero, the sculpture from Medellin and the painter, and he did these sculptures many years ago, and that uh, paloma, pigeon, uh, pa pigeon, was bombed in, a, in an attentado, in a in terrorist, terrorist attack in a very important plaza of Medellin and kill, killed a lot of people like, like uh, many other events that happened those years. So the, the artist wanted to preserve the old, the old pigeon and he uh, put a new one only to represent the tragedy. So we, you cannot understand the process of tra transformation and the opportunity that, that happens in relation of uh, that the, politic, the politics change because a civic movement could have the opportunity to arrive to the government and change many things. So at that time, at that time we were, I was in the, at the university um, Bolivariana leading some research groups, working, working in the north part of the city, trying to understand the relation of the natural geomorphology with the urban fabric and how the occupation happens in the informal areas, talking and de doing debates about the public transport system that could reconnect the community and so on. So I am talking about 2000, 2001. But, but I have the opportunity then, I have the opportunity then to join a very special person that the, the name was, is Sergio Fajardo. And Sergio Fajardo became the mayor. And he lived with a wider group, he lived a civic movement that was completely independ independent from the traditional politics. And invite a lot of people that have been working with the city in different fields, social education and so on. So this, this uh, process opened the field for architecture, architects, designers, cultural people, different agents that uh, could, could be part of a process that connect with the process that, uh, of the city, was, uh, that a process that was happening in the city, but as well, uh, developing new ideas. This, this draw belongs to, drawing belongs to Sergio Fajardo. What's up? He, he want, he, he, he want, and uh, he, try, he always explained that the problem is the wall of opportunities. Because in a society like ours, the key is to have an opportunity. We have a very high, uh, um, very uh, extreme differences in relation with accessibility to education and so on. So to close the door to the illegality and to open the door to the new opportunities on education and culture and so on. So the field of the city became the territory to reach that uh, idea as well. So one of the ideas that happens at that time was how to develop and to integrate actions that could be physical, social, and institutional in the specific strategic territories of the city. So the architecture and the urban design became a very a powerful tool to do that. So we defined at that time the strategy of social urbanism, selected some strategic areas of the city, and trying to define a very precise action. I will show you with some architecture, uh, a renewal approach as well, housing programs and so on, but, but focusing in a specific areas of the city. <clears throat> so this plan belongs to, to 2004. I was trying to recover this plan from just <laughs> because I, so it's a combination of the different actions, the strategic areas, some new transport systems. You see the plan of Medellin. Medellin has a metro line that goes from the south to the north and has as well 
another metro line that goes to the west. We have now a new tramway that goes to the east and connect with the no, new telephericos here. And uh, I am going to explain to you two specific areas. This area that belongs to the first teleferico cable car, like a public transport system that reconnects the people with the system of the metro as well. And as well, this area that we call the new north. So the idea at that time was to be very precise, select some specific corridors of interventions that could happen maybe in, eight, in four or eight years to, to continuous government as well, and selecting some areas that uh, has uh, extreme conditions, it used to be the periphery of the city, some very complex problem of accessibility, inequality, and services, so that represent in some way the image of the problems that the city has. So uh, this uh, plan was the, has had the idea that uh, to select those areas that could be or could start to be transformed in, during eight years. So the first four years, we select three, are three areas. I will show you some of the works. There is a lot, a, another layer of interventions that belongs to a specific buildings <coughs> about culture and education. So the city developed a, a network of library parks located very strategically in some of the, those strategic areas that connect new transport systems with the community, with the, system, the mobility system of the city as well, and start to recover some specific areas. So I am going to, to talk today a little bit about the number one and this that was the number six. I don't know what happens with the number. <laughs> <clears throat> so, this, this image represents international magazines that show the interventions of Medellin, the Library Park La Quintana in the west, the Library Park Spain in the east, the sports facilities in the, down, in the center of the town, the, 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 the Coliseums, for example, the urban and social transformation and the cable car. So you have an image of different strategies and different processes. So, but I am, today I'm, I am going to focus more in the public space, the streets, the open space that connect those iconic transformations. Because was, the reality was that the, mo more, the most powerful tool and transformation belongs to the experiences that the people has in the everyday life. And that experience belongs to the streets, to public spaces to recover the confidence in, this, in, the, in, in the territory. So you see here the two, one, two of the uh, two. Yes, two. <laughs> <laughs> you see the cable car, the teleferico, and the Library Park Spain, one of the two most iconic and uh, important infrastructures. But the everyday life that happens here, and this is the image before, this picture belongs to 2003, and this picture belongs to 2005. So this uh, changed a lot and recovered the, the life. These kids, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe in 2002, cannot be out of the houses after 5 p.m. because that territory was territory of militias. So this process of transformation that used the tool of architecture is very important. So we developed seven ideas, select the strategic uh, areas, integral and holistic processes, understanding the architecture and the power and the power of the possibilities that like link strategic projects and programmatic actions as well. So how to develop uh, the notion of transparency, visibility, that to understand the, 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 the city in the real dimension with the problems and opportunities, and the importance of design and the quality and how to work with community, with proximity, with the problems that are connected with the people, to understand that the importance of the stairs, the balcony, the tree that are in front of the, of the houses. So, I am going first to explain a little bit this area. This area is, a, is an area that was and is to still be like the frontier, the border between the downtown and the barrios of the north. So, before, maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, the people that used to live here in the lower part of the valley and in the south, 
never cross this line to the north. So the challenge was how to reconnect and how to develop a powerful point of encounters, public spaces, and uh, so <clears throat> I am going first to explain to you some strategies that we developed here that was this area, uh, like a border, and then we go to the north with another area with the city it built the first teleferico and so on. So this is the plan of Medellin in 1889, was a small village. This is Carabobo Street, the axis that was very important in the city, and this axis today in 1996 is this axis. So I am going to explain you the, the area and how to recover and how to transform this area. That is this, the, we call the new north or the north zone. Today are happening many beautiful and important things. For me, is the, is the representation of the, in some way, the best, best example that uh, where the city start to change our reality. But we need to multiply this action for a hundred in different parts of the city to transform, to, to, to reach the level that we need in reality. So this is the, the metro station that start to, to, to operate in 95, and the Desire Park, Explora Park, Botanical Garden, and Moravia uh, used to be informal, used to be the, the basurero, the garbage, the garbage uh, mountain in, for recycling. Um, 40,000 people are living here, and this is the, the border that connects the downtown to the barrios to the north. So the first idea was, of course, the most important one was the public transport system. The metro change started to change the, the, the life of Medellin because connect in the real terms the society. And it's, an, uh, it's not uh, underground, it's uh, elevated. So it's in, urban, in urban, with urban approach, it's not the ideal one, but, but give you the real experience to, to see the city and the cable cars as well. So, this is the Carabobo access. So, the, the importance to select a, a, a very powerful uh, linear system that could be part of the transformation that happens with the new buildings, public space around, and step by step uh, be reconnected. So, it's not an, a, a whole idea, a, one idea, because this is the Explora Park. We have a, a different strategy for to recover and open like a public park to the botanical Botanical Garden, today is the most uh, important public park in Medellin as well, and how to reconnect with the informal settlement here of Moravia, with a new cultural center here that Rogelio Salmona designed. So it's a sequence of actions that combine public transport systems, um, new competitions to produce a very iconic and spe uh, special uh, buildings like the pavilion of the Botanical Garden that I would show you, the Explorer Park and so on. So, but the condition of the street, how to improve the mobility and how to recover the condition of the public space in a very simple actions, transforming the mobility and recovering the space that connect with the north as well. So this is the Explorer Park. I work, I am a designer too, I am an, archi well, I am an architect, but I work, in, I work with buildings, so I designed this building at that time. And, but we were working with the government how to recover the access, to reconnect with the, with the cultural center of Moravia here, and connect with the botanical garden, and how to develop a more holistic strategy that combine environment, architecture, and public spaces. But it was not one team. So one team won the competition for the pavilion of the botanical garden, another team develop the ring and open the space around of the botanical garden. We, were, we have been working with Explora Park. So that was an idea that happens during six or seven years and was a combination of processes. I'm not going to explain in detail, with detail, but of course we have a big and very solid process with the community in relation to understand how the Carabobo and the street could be transformed um, at that time we have a, we, when I say we have, is because I, we were in the government. I am, not, I am not now in the government, I'm sorry, because Alejandro is in the government today. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
at that time, uh, in the local TV uh, channel uh, programs, so every 15 days was a specific program for the Carabobo transformation and how to, to talk with community because many things will, uh, are, were going to change and so on. One of the key projects was how to open the walls because that was an amazing natural reserve that used to be the botanical garden, but the territory out of the boundaries was a territory for nobody. So how to, to, to take down the walls, the, wall, the real walls, and define a very interesting ring of public space and as well a strategy that give to the botanical garden and with a very important but very uh, precise architecture. That happens very fast. One of the first decisions was to, to choose which building could be the first in the second year that represent the history that is going to happen after. So that building was, we did a competition and a young team won the pavilion of the, of the Botanical Garden. So this is the outside of the, of the park and architecture, the branch and, and, the, and the pavement and so on, the access to the, to the park and as well the pavilion inside. So that happens in different teams with a strategy and, 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 and different conditions. So this image belongs maybe to 2008 because was not finished the, the Explorer Park and here and so on, but represent the process in movement. So because was and still be going on today, because it's not ready. This, this is the real condition today. And the idea is not to transform all, but to improve. It takes more time, but you have to decide which actions has to be the first and how to start the process and the transformation as well. I'm not going to explain, but those web pages are very important because I am not talking about only architecture was the most important thing was the institutional transformation and the partnerships between private foundation, the community, the government, the universities, and each of the buildings and programs that you see like architecture has a more solid history and the process is very different. So we are architects and designers, but the key of Medellin is not only the physical transformation, it's the institutional transformation, the partnerships between actors, and agents of the city. And for example, the Parque Explora is a partnership between the private foundation, the private companies, and the academy with the government. So the Moravia Cultural Center, for example, born with the community, was an initiative, initiative with the community that found a private foundation that support the transformation and the development of the building, and then did an agreement with the government. So each history is different and is very important so I'm not going to, 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 to explain to you in detail because I don't have time in this moment, but we could talk in the conversation. So I explained this image yesterday. <laughs> has a beautiful history. But so I, am, I, I, I move to the other intervention only to, to, to explain. Maybe I have 10 minutes or... or okay. This is, this is the metro line. So Medellin has to think how to innovate in mobility because we are a city of hills. So how to develop a public transport system that could reach the hills in a in more efficient way. So that was the first, the first uh, example of the telepheric and cable car like, like urban transport system that connect three stations with the metro station of Acevedo that take the people to the city for different services and so on. This image I showed you in the beginning was the cable car that goes to the metro station here in the, in the, in the lower part, the uh, uh, Santo Domingo State, the Andalusia station, Popular station, Santo Domingo station with the Library Park Spain East, and you see some interventions that reconnect the barrios with here, with the public services, this is a, ram, a new rambler, et cetera, et cetera. So, to take the infrastructure like a key tool, like a 
the main the 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 main the main uh, inf like, to take the public transport system like the the Sometimes, I <laughs> okay, okay. So, the public transport system became a very powerful uh, tool to add and to start a holistic transformation. Thinking, thinking in the not only in insulated conception of public transport system, like in very important for for the people because they they spent less than a half of the money taking the cable car, going to the metro, and go to, going to the downtown, because before they have to pay two or three different tickets, bus tickets in informal formal and so on, and less time as well. But the most important thing is how to understand the possibility to transform the itineraries of the common life and the systems of the barrios as well around the stations. So <clears throat> this was an image in 19, 1950, and in the region, the, these areas the region was a very simple action of one street and like an informal occupation along the street. The corridors of the creeks became the frontiers. And, but this image is in 1996. So the stations and the occupation in the hill. So the, the history helps a lot to identify the origin and the most important places of, that belongs to the geography. This is the location of the Library Park Spain. Here is not in the picture because was, the picture was before, and the ravines as well. So we define a precise analysis and precise actions around each station, the different typologies of uh, urban fabric as well, and a clear and a very simple design of actions that connected with the same principles, some axes, pedestrian axes that we connect with barriers to the both sides, giving a new meaning to the rambla on the axis, how the cable car station of the teleferic station is a very important, a very important uh, magneto and, um, and piece of the, of the sequence and, uh, as well, and some key transformation and location of new, new buildings of, in, the, in the context. So, for example, this was one of the first actions that combined a housing program that transformed from informal to formal the, the community of Juan Bobo that has extreme conditions here, very close to the Rambla of Andalusia, and how as well we reconnect the barrio with some simple actions. This is a very simple uh, principle, but for example, the transformation of the basement of the houses, giving them terraces in a very simple way, permit them to start, to start new business. And the community and the, and the street change from 18 business to 300 business after, uh, after three, three or four years. So these small actions are very important as well in the real transformation and recover the condition of the city. <clears throat> How to reconnect and give a new meaning with very simple design with, with quality, uh, new links that reconnect from one barrio to another, crossing a creek here that used to be the frontier before. So this, 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 these actions and this project means a lot because in 1990s, 1991, 1996, the people from Andalusia cannot cross, the people from Andalusia can uh, not cross to to La Francia because this creek was the frontier and this barrio belongs to different militias. So to reconnect and to give visibility and meaning to those places was very important. So, but it was a very precise urban design and project. You see the section, this is the cable car station, this is the, 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 the bridge La Paz in, 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 in the creek of La Herrera, and this is Juan Bobo Creek with the, with the green, with the green uh, bridge. Uh, where the housing program of Juan Bobo happens as well. So it's a sequence of new connections, improving the street, new, new transport system, and housing program that start to happen in the time. 
<clears throat> so on specific uh, actions, process, and projects, this territory was a territory of nobody. So the creek before was like a tragedy. So was the back of the, of the barrios as well. And the other example that, that is interesting but is very complex is what happened with the creeks. The creeks is part of the DNA of Medellin. We have more along the and going down from the hills. So you can understand the tragedy, the problems, but as well the opportunity. This was the creek. This picture belongs to 2004, not four, 2003 was 80% informally the tenancy, the unemployment, and the condition was really complex. And a process of transformation start. This is a picture after the work. The, 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 the strategy was to improve the 70% of the houses. We did a detailed study about risk. We recovered the environmental condition. And in the, in the same place, relocate the community. So the 100% of the community were relocated in a very strategic small buildings around the same place. So it was a combination of improving the quality and the, and the condition of risk of the, of the creek, how to select very specific uh, sites to locate, relocate new buildings, and how to improve the accessibility. This is in, in working, how the process happening, etc. Et and this is the image that is the Juan Bobo Creek with the housing program, improving the quality of, of, of the houses. This is the cable car station and the library park in Spain. So all in the same area. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the last, the last, the last uh, uh, play, uh, territory and barrio that I would like to explain, this is the last cable car station at that time. We have a new cable car stations today. Cable car station of Santo Domingo. So the important thing was how to transform the school. It was a, a public school at that time. How to improve the school here, open a new space, create a new plaza like a balcony, select the place to do, to do the competition for the library park. We didn't know at that time who uh, could be the architect. And uh, Giancarlo Masanti won the competition to reconnect the itinerary and improve the quality of the, of the, of the, of the barrio. So this is the cable car station. The open park, the school is here, the new park, the library park station, and how to recover the itinerary of the, of the community. You cannot transform the, all the houses, you cannot transform all their reality, but you could start to transform and give quality of life, accessibility, build confidence, uh, recover the confidence of the public space, and giving them some new meanings and possibilities. So like the other transformation, that picture belongs to 2003, and that picture belongs to 2000, maybe eight or nine. The important thing is the same place. The, the important thing is that the process improved the confidence and the investment, but this investment belongs to the, to the people and the families. It's not the government that changed the houses. So in the informal areas, there are a lot of economy, but when you develop uh, the, 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 the correct process and give them as well some support, the economy that belongs to the informal logic start to, start to work. And the improvement was amazing. The externalities are, are amazing. So this is um, a new school as well. Uh, uh, and we develop a process that, we develop a process with different steps. The first, uh, Phase belong to the uh, design phase. The second, to the build uh, and to uh, to work with the community as well. And the third, the activation process. So, how to work with community at that time was very important. And uh, today we're still learning how to work with community. We develop a strategy that we call imaginary workshops with people and community, and how to de develop processes and to as well to expand and trying to give more, uh, a more sustainable condition with the, with, the, with, the, with the process and programs as well. So Medellin still has problems, of course. We have a, a huge challenge. If you go to Medellin, maybe you see oh, Medellin is the same than 20 years ago because we are talking about a, a city of three million and a half inhabitants. 
But the reality is that some things change and the psychology of the city change. And the process starts. We will see if we will have continuity. But until today, we have been having a continuity in the last three governments, as some kind of continuity. You could, you could see the UWAS, a very powerful new infrastructure around uh, water tanks in the periphery of the city, like a cultural center, for example. There is a competition to transform the access of the river. This is a library park. This is a, some, different, some, different, some different programs and projects. So I would like to end up with a more personal obsession that belongs to the city, because I think all the cities has, has specific identities. So if you ask me, and not only me, but the reality is that some of the keys of Medellin belongs to the, this relation between the connection of nature, the water lines, the creeks and the ravines and the river, and the opportunity to transform the city because the history of the ravines is the history of many of the barrios of Medellin. So th this is the structure of, the, of Medellin in relation with the downtown, with the, we, we were here in the cable car and so on. So you could follow each creek and you could follow a, some specific problems but as well as specific opportunities. But it, this is true. We have more than 200 ravines. And so I hear I lost some sentence, but some of them today are not accessible. Some of them are, are very has a very complex occupation. But you could, you could reach each ravine walk, a, walking, a, a walking distance less than 12 minutes walking from every part of the city. So you could imagine that you could recover the ravines, reconnect an environmental approach as well, but social approach like linear parks as well, that could improve step by step the city. Because if we are thinking like an architect, it's very important to, to think in the bigger picture, but how to act very, in a very strategic uh, approach. So how to act precisely, that belongs to a bigger system. So the rabbins could be one of the keys of the city. So I, when I used to write, to write in the new, local newspaper, and I wrote this, this is the last part of a column that I, I wrote maybe four years ago, about, about the identity, about the potential of the ravines. So, nature has drawn Medellin with it, its ravines. It was a gift. We get proof of this when we walk the city. Anywhere we go, to there is always a ravine. It's not a dream to imagine our city with hundreds of hundreds of ravines, green corridors close to our homes. Our illusion would be that the name that defines the identity of each one of our neighborhoods, the name that would identify us in the city and define us each, would be the name of our closest ravines. And the name are amazing. I am from La Negra, La Loca, La Caravieja, El Ahorcado, El Chorro Oscuro, El Salado, El Malpaso, La Onda, La Alta Vista, La Esmeralda, Las Violetas, La Milagrosa, La Presidenta, La Señorita. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, the original plan was to take some questions before we go into the second presenter, but given the time that we have, we're going to uh, move directly to our second speaker, Alejandro Restrepo, who uh, is the current city architect, Marin Director of, of Strategic Projects. He is in the government. He is the government. <laughs> Just an architect. <laughs> Okay, I've been asked to talk for two more minutes. Uh, um, I think this was quite an, quite an amazing, uh, very quick uh, cross view of what the process of Medellin has been. Uh, as you see, the, the number of agents, actors, and processes 
are incredibly complex. The way that the architectural transformation, although very small and sometimes very humble, have had the capacity to transform what Alejandro calls the psychology of the city. Uh, this is a city when you come to the airport and you pick up a taxi, the taxi driver will talk to you about public space as the most natural thing to discuss in the city. I mean, there is, a, there is a tradition that even in the darkest times of Medellin, the stadium will be filled up with people listening to poetry from all over the world. Uh, there's a poetry festival that will attract 30,000 people, fill up the stadium for three days, listening to Vietnamese and African uh, poems in languages that nobody could understand, but everybody loved the fact that somebody was reading poetry. So even in the darkest moments, uh, this happened. And I think it's be precisely because the city went to those extremes of violence that the whole society pulled together to, uh, to make this happen. And I know there are questions, how was this possible? Where did the funds come from? Uh, and so on. I'm sure that, or I hope that we will have time to get into some of those questions. I fill up the, the two minutes you asked me for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much one more time for this invitation to the entire team of the Faculty of Architecture of the University of Syracuse. I'm very special to you, Mr. Todd Robin, for the invitation and you for being here. Yesterday, we talked about uh, some responses, some answers to our situation in Medellin. But today is the day to present you the questions. If you want an intelligent answer, you have to make an intelligent question. And um, to continue the line of the process and the work in the city from Alejandro Echeverri, from Jorge Perez, and from another architect, I am just a temporary actor in the history of Medellin with a team of a very, very special number uh, and the quality of architects. And we have to continue this line and give the testimony to our successors in three years. And uh, this is the city. Alejandro told you uh, very good the history of the city. And the city is um, every day in movement between problems and solutions, between problems and hope, and still working every day. The first thing is the connaturalization of the valley, the first thing that I want to tell you. What is the meaning of the connaturalization of the valley? Okay, this is the first problem. This is the city, actually. The north is on your left. This is the river. They are the three tutelary hills. This is El Volador Hill. This is the Nutibara Hill. This is La Somadera, this is the city center, and this is the north part of the city that Alejandro explained with you with the projects. The most of projects from Alejandro and for, um, and for another um, administrations are located here are, and in the periphery. But the city center suffered a very big problem. Some people went to the north, and a very good, project, very good, a very, a very good quantity of good projects are here in the north, and other people went to the south, to the west, and to the east, and the center is alone. 1.2 million people are visiting every day the city center, but just 80,000 people live there. This could be a very big problem, and is it a very big problem for the habitation and for the use of the city center? Okay, this is the city that right now we have. They are the natural conditions of the, of the city. They are the three hills. This is the river. And we have, too, the same dream of Alejandro. And this is the continuity of the investigation, of the doctoral investigation of Alejandro, too. The watersheds to make, to draw our morphology in the city. This is the river. They are the mountains. They are the watersheds. And we dream that in 10 years, we can connect the city with the watersheds, with the nature, with the vegetation, to the city center, to the north, and to the south. This is an ecosystem, an urban ecosystem, and we have to continue this dream, and we hope that our successors continue this dream too, to make together this possibility in our city. 
I am an architect too. Yeah, I am, actually I am a student of architecture. I am studying in Munich and uh, my idea is produce everyday new knowledge through the study. And in 2010, seven years ago, with a very good friend of mine, Javier Castañeda, and another very good friend of mine, Edison Santa Maria, had a team, an architectural team, that won a public competition. This public competition was organized by the local administration to design the public libraries, to design another schools, and to design the kindergartens, 20 new kindergartens for the city in the poorest areas of the city. We have right now a lot of problems. The architecture and the urbanism is not the only solution for our problems. But this solution can be very, very helpful for our situation. And in this part of the city, in the north part of the city, we have this situation. This is an informal settlement. You saw that Moravia is the name of the barrio. It was 25 years ago or 30 years ago, a mountain of garbage for the recycling of the garbage. And some people and some families was there from 35, from, from 40 years and still there. And this is the process of the formal occupation of the barrio. But every house has a very special expression of the time, of the reality of the families, of the ideas to go up from the, from the street. And this is a very, very active neighborhood. Right now, we are making, with the Technical University of Berlin, a dwelling project for Moravia, and uh, with the administration of Medellin, with the Technical University of Berlin, and with the University Pontificia Bolivariana, to give some ideas to the, muni to the municipality and we, the people of Moravia, to do new developments of dwellings or housing in this barrio. And this is the situation. Every house has a message. Every house has a style. Every owner has a dream. And every family has a lot of times. Maybe it could be this is the grandpa or the grandma, the sons and the grandchildren. And this is still growing. And in this sector, we won this um, public competition. And the first activity was to show the community our designs. We changed our designs uh, after the comments of the community. The community said, OK, this is a very good building. Thank you very much for the building. But this is just a building for the children. Where are the space for us? We lost. A couple of years in our life between the violence and the absence of opportunities. If you come here, please think in the families, not just in the children. And this was the reason why we changed the designs and we discussed with the community and with the people the best way to give them another design to recompose the familiar groups in the barrio. It was the, a part of Moravia. It was the location of the project. And this is the location of the project. And after the works, we designed this building with this patio, with this common area. This is the place for encounter between the parents and children. At morning, at noon, when the parents re-encounter the children were now with a very big hook. And this is a very special situation to recompose the families in this barrio. These elements are in precast concrete, and they will be uh, made by the community. Uh, the people without work was in the building and asked us, what can I do in the building? And we designed with them this kind of solar protection elements to uh, bring some opportunities to this community. The patio, this is the communal areas. This is the patio one more time with the same materials that we saw in the facades of the barrio. They are the precast elements. This is the conformation of the building. This is the patio. They are the common areas, and they are the classrooms for the children. They are the sons of the barrio. Right now, the children, has, uh, the children have 
15 years, 14 years, and we're still in contact with them. They are the classrooms or the rooms for the play, the playrooms maybe, and uh, always with a very special continuity from the outside to the inside. This window is a very, very special material. It's a very special kind of glass with a lot of security, of course. But we would like that the, key, that the children see the exterior place of the barrio and see the exterior areas of the kindergarten. This is the topography, too, of the mountain, the vegetation, the playrooms, and the communal areas in the barrio. Three years after um, we won another public competition with Javier Castañeda and Felipe Bernal for another kindergarten in another location of the city. It was on the east, very close to the city center. Moravia was there and El Pinal was there. This is the zone of El Pinal, this is the sector of El Pinal and with the community we followed the same process. We showed the community the project, we spoke with the community, and we uh, become some comments, uh, recommendations, and ideas of the community. And after, between the houses and in this place, we had a plaza for the encounter, another plaza inside for the encounter between the children and the parents, and the classrooms or the playrooms of the city. For us, the urban space of the projects was the most important thing in our designs. The playrooms, the communal areas inside could be useful if you want, but the place of the encounter was a place for the barrio and for the people of the barrio. And in this place, the children take three times the food every day and they can play with the instructors every day in this kind of um, rainforest. We can collect rainwater in these trees or in these columns, and the rainwater could be reutilized in the uh, restrooms or in other spaces in the kindergarten. This is the topography of our city. This is the patio inside and the playground for the children. The playrooms are open spaces as uh, the playrooms in Moravia, and they are free spaces. They can play outside or inside. They can uh, be here or sleep here, and the, the activities are always in connection between the external side and the interior side. They are the playrooms. It was built by the with the money of the local administration and it was organized by the administration to the competition and when I see this photo I believe in the democracy in the architecture I believe in the opportunities that the architecture can give to the communities maybe this is not the solution but temporary but in some times but in some days could be a very special activity for the children in the barrios, and for the parents too. Maybe this is a good beginning, this is a better beginning than the beginning without place to encounter or to play. This is the night in the barrio. The barrio is in the border of the kindergarten, and the natural elements, the collecting of water, the patio, and the place of the encounter, encounter inside and outside, bring a connection with the barrio through a building and the night in the barrio and in the city that is related, this is the city center, very, very close to the Pinal, and this is a relation between the barrio and the barrio with the city center with the kindergarten. Another project, it was built in 2008 when Alejandro was the director of urban projects in Medellin. I won another competition, public competition, to make a public space uh, very close to the one very important library in Medellin. It's called Biblioteca or Library Piloto. And it was, at, is it in this zone, El Pinal was there, Moravia was there. 
here is the library in the, and the city center is here. And uh, 15 years ago, it was a public parking. That's the library, that is the building of the library, but outside it hasn't a connection between the cultural activities that you can meet inside and uh, this place was just a parking place. And we designed a roof and a cultural plaza and the streets, that board, sidewalks that border the building, we um, remove the walls outside the building and we put windows to see from the external side, the interior side, the activities in the library. This is the zone of intervention and this is the roof. It was the parking place, but the roof is a cultural place for these kind of events, concerts, the natural elements still there. The roof is the assimilation of the natural conditions as it is a combination between the trees and uh, another elements, artificial elements to make a solar protection and give to the community a best place to uh, develop another cultural events. Like that, for example, concerts. Uh, activities with the children of some schools or kindergartens. And this is the street of the culture and knowledge that border is very, very close to the building. We remove this kind of walls and we open the building to the community. Under the shadows, under the trees, you can make a pause here uh, has, uh, you can have another place for the encounter with the community and you can see the activities inside the building with this or from this street. It was designed too with bioclimatic conditions, the acceleration of the wind and the conditions for the solar protection inside the building without walls and uh, with the, uh, under the roof to make a, bare, uh, a better place and comfortable place in order to qualify the bioclimatic uh, situation in this public space. Okay. And now, the priority for the city is the city center. I told you that a lot of people went to the north and other institutions and people, families that were in the city center went to the south and other people went to the east and, and, uh, and east, but the city center is still alone. 1.2 million people are visiting every day the city center, but just 80,000 people live there. This is one of the most important questions that we have, how we can rehabilitate the city center, how we can offer new proposals for housings, dwellings, and uh, maintain the connection between the city center and the activity of housing. The three projects and the city center. And I have four questions to maybe discuss for Andrew in this lecture. The first one is how to connect the city with the city center. It's not just a physical connection. It's a um, connection between the activities in the population of Medellin with the city center. The second one is the question about mobility. How can we organize the mobility of the city center to bring better conditions for the use of the urban space. The third one, how can we improve the quality of the urban spaces, of the urban places in the city center? And the fourth one, how can we attract to the families in Medellin to live one more time in the city center? Maybe they are very, very complex questions but we have to do it, we have to do them. Uh, without people, maybe the life in the city center is a half life. It's not the entire life all day long. 
in the city center, 1.2 million are working, are walking, are making a lot of activities. But living is a very, very short percent of this quantity. This is a video, maybe if you can help me to see the video with the history of the city center. Perfect. Thank you very much. They are the Teatro Junín, El Edificio Coltejer. It's a very important building. This is the ferrocarril station, Quebrada Santa Elena. It was covered 70 years ago. Ayacucho, where the tram originally was, and where the tram is. Some kind of old buildings. Unfortunately, the buildings are not there. This is Avenida La Playa. I will show you later the Avenida La Playa and the another buildings in the city center. They are still there, the Museo of Antioquia too, and the other buildings too. It was a very short history of the city center. We lost a very important buildings in the city center. The new development of the city removed our treasures in architecture and built high-rise building, office building, and the institutions were to the city center between the 40s and 80s or 90s. Right now, the institutions are in El Poblado, in, south, in the south of the city. This, uh, the, those buildings are empty, and other buildings uh, were recycled to use, and we are in the way to buy the municipality the patrimonial buildings to reuse with official activities and with educational activities too in the city center. Okay, this is one building that show you that while when the lights in the city are turning on in the center, in the city center are turning off. And this is a very clear explanation about the reality in our city center. And we analyzed a lot of topics. I will show you maybe 10. This is the area of the city center in relation with the El Volador Hill, in relation with our University Pontificia Bolivariana is there, in relation with the sports unit, Atanasio Girardot, and in relation with the another places of the city. This is Moravia, for example. This is El Pinal here. And this is the south park of the city. Uh, this is called El Poblado. The, uh, Traditional city center is here in this area. Our natural situation are in the borders of this, on the borders at the borders of the city center: El Volador, El Nutibara Hill, La Somadera Hill, and some watersheds or creeks are here. Our equipments are institutional equipments, offices, patrimonial buildings but the dwellings are not in the city center. Some university in the north part of the center, some theaters like Paulo Tón Uribe and another small theaters here, but they are not in the heart of the city center. We analyzed two our patrimonial buildings. We analyzed to the use of the city center. They are workshops and educational buildings here, workshops here in red, educational buildings too. The dwelling is here and here in the Avenida La Playa, but in this zone, we had, maybe 40, 50 years ago, a lot of very good dwellings, but they are not still in the city center. They are empty, they are all construction empty, and this is the area most dangerous in our city center right now. They are our social economical strata, the strata in the city center, uh, close to the uh, west part of the city are the richest people in this zone, but this zone and these and other zones are uh, like a poor zones in the city center and are very, very dangerous right now. We have to, in order to follow our territorial plan, we had master plans very close to the El Volador and the city center, the marketplace, uh, our civic center too, the stadium, but we have to small partial plans for this part of the city 
in the center, the analysis, the analysis show us that in this part of the city, in relation with the another parts of the center, we have a very, very important opportunity to intervene in this zone. And this is a um, drawing that shows us that the most dangerous zone is in this part when we don't, where we don't have dwellings. This is a very special data, this is a very special information that we have to take to analyze and maybe to make proposals for dwellings and public spaces in relation with the place of the city center. Good. The second situation. We spoke yesterday about, about the connections, the natural connections between the city and the city center. At first, I will show you a video with an aerial view of the center. Mm. OK, this is the most dangerous zone. Maybe this is an earthquake right now. <laughs> <laughs> Call the head the Museum of Antioquia, the dangerous zone here at San Antonio, and the another access the Cathedral and the north part of the city. Sorry, it's not very good, but you can remember it. OK, one more time, the part that we analyze the mountains or the, or the hills, the ring of mobility, I will explain you later how is working the mobility and the ring of mobility in the city center, the connections across the river, uh, like a link between our hills, the Avenida La Playa, one of the most important axes in our plan that connect the east zone with the west part of the center. Here, very close from this point, you will find the tram line and the, the students that are going to Medellin in one month maybe can recognize very easily this part of the work. Here's the traditional center. Another axis R in the way to connect the center to the south and to the north with the, these uh, natural places. Moravi is here, the botanical garden is here. The campus of the Universidad de Antioquia and the National University are there. Another access to bring the connections between the natural elements and the city with the city center too. And the parks that make up the city center. The topic of mobility. This is our situation today. Yeah. This is our situation. This is a chaos. The, um, 1.2 million, 50% of these 1.2 million are going to the city center in um, public transport and the another are going uh, in, in individual transports. This is our situation in this part of the city. We have in the analysis the line of the metro from north to the south, the tram line from the middle point of the center to the east, and here you can find the cable car to Alejandro Chavarria neighborhood. And this is the line of the Metro Plus, that is a kind of bus. And we are introducing to Medellin more than 500 electrical cars, public transport with electrical cars for the city center. That is for the next year. This is a three-dimensional drawing with these uh, lines of transport. This is the tram, this is the Paranymph, which is a very historical and patrimonial building belonging to the University of Antioquia. The people that is going to Medellin in one month can see uh, the zone and the variation of the zone uh, between every two or three blocks. And the ring of mobility with the public transport that we are organizing too make free this zone of the city center. You can combine the public transportation in bus with the metro, with another uh, forms of transport, and uh, we are creating more than 400,000 square meters 
for new public spaces and pedestrian zones in the city center to improve the condition of mobility and to articulate this mobility with cyclo uh, bike routes and uh, another non-motorized ways for the city center. This is the tri-dimensional space. 20 new kilometers for bike routes are uh, in, under construction next year for this part of the view, for the city. Okay, the projects and the public space. This is our public space. I know that I have five minutes, I will run. Uh, this is a public space very close to the, cross, uh, so the crossroad between Junin and Avenida La Playa, two important axes in the city center. They are a kind of informal use of our public space and this is the formal commerce and the formal uh, construction, but uh, it doesn't work with these situations that we have in Medellin. The informal conditions are going to the public space to sell something and to occupy the, this public space. But we are organizing some things in the public space with the people that work on the streets. It's not a very special answer to remove the people that work there to make clean the streets. We have another reality, we have another life. We have not a lot of opportunities to work. We have to work with the people to organize another public space or in the same public space, a kind of formalization of the sellings, of the commerce, of the work for the people. And every work and every design is considering this situation in the borders of the street. We are changing the routes for the cars to make new sidewalks, bike routes, and I will show you the new points for the uh, ubication or location of the um, of a people that sell something here in the city center. Here, for example, this is La Avenida La Playa, the, cr the crossroad between La Playa and Junín, I showed you. This is La Avenida La Playa facing west. This is the current situation. We are organizing the people in another parts and here in this um, design. And this is the last part of La Playa with the people that are living in this zone. This is a very, very big problem, and the architecture is not just the answer, but could be very, very helpful. Maybe in the questions, we can explain more the works in this part of the city. Okay, another extra is the avenue, the Avenue Oriental, Oriental Avenue. We are replacing these pyramids or prismas of concrete with the same spirit, but with nature here, because the conditions, the ambiental conditions of the city are changing. Originally, the prismas of concrete were to, say, to make safe the, cross, the crossroad uh, in the Avenida Oriental. It was made to reduce the accidentality on the street. And this project achieved the goal. But we can improve the condition, the, ambient, the environmental condition with these designs. This is another point of view of the Avenida Oriental. Some uh, stops of the Metro Plus will be there in the central uh, space. This is another project with this kind of occupation right now. And this is the change with the project and with the formalization of the models of work. Maybe the renders are not showing the final stage of the process. It was more than 200 people, and with every people we had appointments to organize the new point of the ceiling, the new point of the commerce, the new point of the work for these people. It was maybe the hardest work in this design. This design was made by Carlos Puerta and Veronica Ortiz, uh, a public competition in Colombia. Junín, you saw that? is reducing the, from three lines to one uh, to, to give more, a better proportion of the public space in this part of the city. And the articulation with another place 
very close to the city center. This is El Sagrado Corazón to make new public spaces and to recycling the old buildings in Medellin. We are articulating our plan with 40 parks and close to the parks we are designing or seeing the future locations for the new dwellings in the city center of Medellin. This is another park, this is the Parque de Bolívar with a patrimonial building here. We are improving the proportion of the public space and we are reducing the space for the cars. This is another point of view and this is the south park part of the park. This is the cathedral and they are patrimonial buildings in Medellin. Our patrimony is very young, it's maybe 100 years old or no more than 120 years old. Another parks, other integrations, this is the current situation and they are new parts for the accommodation of the informal people in this part of the city. This project is making right now by Sebastian Monsalvi and Latitude Architecture. They want an invitation, an official invitation for the government, from the government to take the project. And housing to the end. Yeah? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Two more. The parcel plans, the dwellings, the parks very close to the dwellings, the partial plans with the proportion of the constructions and the, the new solutions for the people in Medellin. To the end, I would like to read this sentence written by Carlos Raúl Villanueva. When I was a student, I learned from this sentence a lot of things. And the architectural still as a social act. And in this academic context, don't forget, please, that we are students always, that we are professionals of architecture, that we are scientists too, but we are the actors of a social process with the people. Architecture is social act per excellence, utilitarian art as a projection of life itself, linked to economic and social problems and not only to aesthetic standards. For this, the form is not the most important. Its main mission is to solve human affairs. It's expressive and conditional medium, the interior space. The useful, fluid, user space enjoyed by men is a matrix that involves life. It's art of the inside and outside space, abstract and non-representative art, but with a function at its essence of Cartesian logic. That's it. Thank you very much. So that's what you get when you invite to South Americans. We do talk a lot. Is this the studio? But so we have a few minutes for. We have a few minutes for questions. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. You guys, you do. Julia, do you want to start with a question? I know you have a question. Yeah, well, thank you so very much for those presentations. So my question is, uh, and, and I, I think it formed over the course of both the presentations, so the history of the transformation of the city and some of the contemporary efforts relative to the city center. And I suppose it, it centers around the process by which you decide whether these acts of urbanism, let's say, are tr have a potential to be transformative as opposed to ones that might be about making the city uh, more aesthetically pleasing. So the, really the relationship between transformation and I'll use the word beautification if you don't mind. So, you know, so, for, so in the, some of the final images, uh, of the streetscapes, I was starting to wonder, in terms of the, the amount of them and, the, the, and their articulation, if they're still gonna have the kind of fundamental power some of the earlier moves had 
about making connections, for instance. So can you talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. You have the harder okay. job following up on some of the earlier work, I think. Yeah. I will give you my personal opinion in this point. And I wrote the sentence uh, with the difference between transformation and beautification. Maybe the beautification in a subjective con this, uh, consideration is the correct way to transform or improve the quality of life of the people. We are working in the city center of Medellin to improve the conditions of the people, of the urban space, and on other conditions like mobility and, and other things. This is not an easy process. It's a very, very complex process. We are fighting with the reality in the city center to give to the people maybe more opportunities that improve their work, for example, the conditions of life, and to give a better proportion between the areas used by cars and the areas that will be used by the people. This is our first consideration. How can, how can we improve or make a better proportions in this part of the city between the cars or motorized mobility and non-motorized mobility? This is the first question. The second one, if we improve the public space, maybe, I am not sure, but maybe, we can offer it a best situation for housing in the city center. For sure, this is another situation. It's, relation, uh, it's, it's related with security, related with another kind of use of the public space. But we have to improve the public space to give another opportunity to the people that we are inviting to life in the city center. At the end, maybe the most complex situation in this transformation process, not beautification, transformation process, is make some arrangements with the people that are using the public space. These people said, no, it was nobody here. Why are you removing me to another place? What is the mean of, improvement, of the improvement of my quality of life? I, uh, I am living very good here. And this is an arrangement, a partial arrangement maybe, between the space that we can give them and the space that, we, that they can give us. Right now, we are in this process. The arrangements are uh, made with the people. And we are starting the, with the construction of the public space for make a transformation um, of the quality of life of the people and the quality of the public space. We have to see that if the answer was the correct or not. Please stop. Hi, thank you. Hi. Um, this, this is gonna sound like a transportation question, but it's really a, a urban design question. Um, and uh, I, I wonder about how much you, th you believe the, um, the introduction of the transportation corridor in, in um, in one of the projects that you showed, Alejandro, um, was, was as impactful or more impactful or important, more important than the individual um, urban intervention projects. Meaning, um, could those urban intervention projects work without the transportation, the, the focus on the transportation corridors first? And then, because um, I really want to understand like what the actual traffic situation is in Medellin what it was before and what it is now. And then I guess the other part of the question is for the other Alejandro about these, these streetscapes that you're showing. How much are those intended to um, affect traffic or transportation in the city? And um, is, is it supposed to improve or is that part of the equation? So, um, It's okay or? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 it's good. So it's okay now? No. no. It's okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I am okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. 
So, so it's, it's the, the most uh, interesting and successful examples that we have uh, uh, belongs to the simultaneously coordination, and not simultaneously coordination, but connect with uh, some uh, new infrastructures that belongs to the public transport system that reconnect and other programs that develop a more holistic in relation with urban design, itineraries, architecture, and so on. So, because in, in the city like ours, like Medellin, the, the, the biggest problem is the segregation and to lack of accessibility to many different services. When I am talking about services, I'm talking not only the accessibility, I'm talking the, the good uh, education, That means that the public transport systems are really important. And it's really important to transform and to, 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 to become a key element to reconnect in some way and to improve the, the, the quality of life of the people. So, from my point of view, the, 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 the best examples of Medellin belongs to this holistic that combines the infrastructure with um, small scale actions interconnected to each other. So, but of course, you, you cannot have always that kind of combination. So you must to improve some different areas that maybe in some years uh, we have a public transport system. So I cannot answer you which one is most, more important. I, I believe two of them of the, 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 the integral approach, approach is, is, is the key of the transformation in some way. And it's a sequence and so on. But one thing that is, is, is important to understand when you are as well an architect or a technician as well, and when you are as well in the other position in the government, is, is the lack of co the common sense because the most useful thing is to reconnect things and to connect some investment with another investment. And to understand that you could give a new meaning to, to a traditional infrastructure. So this, this possibility is, 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 is wonderful. In relation, I, I remember we, when we were in 2002, before we went inside the municipality government, and we were in the university uh, doing some debates about that because at that time the city was thinking to develop a new cable car system for transport. And I showed you an image that we did some debates asking that we need cable cars connecting with the earth. So uh, public debates that we have to develop the public transport system, adding some additional programs and be very strategic with them. So um, I think both of them are, are very important. And if you have the opportunity in different states to connect them, so the, 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 the capacity to transform the quality of life on the people will be uh, bigger, of course. I, I would like to, to ask you both a question that I know everybody is dying to ask you, but only after a hundred response. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, very short. Uh, in order to pedestrianize 400,000 square meters in the city center, my point of view is that we are not removing the places for the cars. We are giving the people another places for the use in the urban space. This is my point of view. And the second one, this will be affect the trans this will affect the transport for sure, the, the public or the private transport in the city center. But in our analysis, for example, I have an statistics and, and a very special statistic. Ten different bus, center, bus enterprises are taking the same route, I take the same line. We have to organize that. This is a very complex work, for sure. But if we don't have that, we can't reorganize the use of the public space in the city center of, of Manhattan. It was just an, an example. Because okay. uh, I, I know many of you have asked the question, 
where does the money come from? How, how is this, how was this project? How were your projects paid for? How are you going to pay for your projects? Where, there is that, that question. How, how was that, what was it possible to do what you guys did? You could ask, El Pacho. I, I could <laughs> ask, okay. No, I know. I will, I will. You could answer. <laughs> that the whole city is in process of transformation. So this is not real. Yeah. So I, I, I explain some specific areas, two or three only. And if you see, was one, <coughs> ten, six or seven small bridges and one public corridor and some built. So it's a very important work, of course, in relation with the public policy. But um, the thing is to change the priorities because the government has money. Some of them has more and some of them has less money. Medellin is the second city in Colombia, but is the, 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 the industrial... The center of Colombia has the biggest bank, the biggest group of banks, semi-companies, retail. So the economy is really... Powerful. We are not talking about... We are talking about the real economy in relation with so legal. legal economy. So, mm, if you think that you could change the priority to change the investment of a big uh, highway, an elevated highway, and to invest that money, amount of money, you could develop 60 or 50 libraries. So only to give you an image, and it's a question of priority of politicians. So in, 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 in our time, I am talking about 2004, the mayor has a very clear idea to change some investment that the city has to do in infra big infrastructures and to move them to social actions, public transport systems, and some cultural interventions and so on. This is one, one question. The other is one answer. The other is deficiency in relation to be transparent and to uh, fight the corruption because the corruption takes 15 or 20 percent of the budget in investment. So uh, Medellin changed to be one of the last cities in Colombia in relation with corruption, so we, to have the more bad uh, rates of corruption, to became the first one in transparency. So Medellin was, uh, has a, a high efficiency in that. So, and the third answer is related with the institutional capacity. All the cities in Colombia are not the same, but I must say that we have a privilege in Medellin because we have a very powerful institutions. If you ask the people who are the, the institution that they value the most, always the metro company, the sports uh, institute, and so the public facility company are in the three, four or three in the top. And those uh, institutions, institute belongs to Medellin. So that is this another part of the history. So I'm not talking an idea, I am not talking about an ideal situation, but th that combination of things uh, changed a lot in the last 15 years in Medellin, uh, and we have uh, in some way a privileged condition. Yes. Um, they are political decisions from social ideas. Our mayor, Federico Gutierrez, yes, the current mayor, told me two years ago if I was interested to go to Medellin to work with him in the urban projects of the city, and he told me that the city center and the articulation with the city center with the other parts of the city was his priority. I answered yes, of course. I went to Medellin to work with him. And uh, from a political decision, take it with social ideas and social necessities, we are working in this way. About the um, money, who paid for this work? The municipality, of course, has uh, an important um, object to to pay for this work, and we are we have in Medellin a very important help. They are the public enterprises that supply energy and water, and 30% of the utilities of this enterprise are going to make, with the municipality and with the government, 
the urban projects for the social investi investments for the, develop, uh, for the development of the city. This is a very good advantage that we have in Medellin. In Colombia, we don't have another city, maybe you, you know that, but we don't have another city that the public enterprises are supporting with money the development of the city plans for the government. This is the combination in our city. I, I, I have some, one thing in relation with EPM, that is the public enterprise that is uh, exceptional that a public company is an example in the world. Yeah. And the World Bank take this company to show that the possibility that a public company could be very efficient. So in, in, in relation, is, in Medellin, it's, it's more important to, to select the manager of the EPM mm -hmm. than the mayor. Yes. And uh, the CEO, yes. until today, until today, we are not free of that. Until today, very good people have very efficient. Yes, key people are, are, have been the manager of the company. So we 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 see what happens in the future. Yeah, but they actually sell energy to most of Latin America, so they bring yeah. tons and tons of money. Uh, not to put any pressure on, on the students coming to Medellin, but uh, the work you're doing will be presented. We already have an appointment with the mayor. We have an appointment with the Metro Company, that is one of the best, and we have an appointment also with the EPM. So the because three, this, well, and because Jorge, so we have appointments with some of the three biggest companies in, in the city that are very interested to see what you can bring. So, um, do we have time for more questions, or do you guys need to go back to studio? One more question. Okay. Uh, that follows on how you pay, which is simply how is it, and especially in the early projects, Alejandro, when you were saying that there's no change of, let's say, the favela uh, socioeconomic structure by the installation of the infrastructure. So how is it that real estate values don't change adjacent to the public improvements and therefore completely change the demographics of the locations? Talking about gentri gentrification. So this is, this is a very important question, but in the case uh, of the north part of the city, the precarious condition of the, of the barrios as well, in some way, I must say, preserve the risk of the private investment in the first, step, in the first years, until today. Because, of course, the public transport system improve a lot the quality of life of the people, the new library parks and schools and so on, but it still be the condition of informality around. And the, our city is very segregated in a big portions to the opposite to the north and, and, and still has some preconception to one side to another. So, but the things start to change a little bit. But until today, the majority of the people still be living in the same place. Mm. But the things are changing. The things are changing and the risk is, is coming, I think so. Uh, but this, the time is the key. Because if you could have a more, more time to develop the condition of the people and to develop some local economies and so on, I, I I hope this condition preserve the majority of the people that could improve the, with the territory. Because that thing hap happens very fast, like another example that the private uh, developers change the condition and the uh, speculation start to happen very fast. So that is different in our case, but the risk is still with us. Um, I would like to end by giving Alejandro, you, you have the the last word, because I think there's a message that you, there was something you wanted to talk about today that we didn't get the opportunity to do, which is something that's really important for you, as a, or for us as a school, is that many of these things you've been looking at today started in the the small classrooms, in the studios that we were doing during the times where Medellin was completely in uh, surrounded or sunken into violence. I mean, we, we had to do workshops literally under military guard, mm. under death threats to 
to do workshops where things like this would, would be thought, you know, the, the botanic garden wall, uh, the, the new centers, that, you know, there are a lot of things that were happening that not only in architecture, but in other schools, in other universities. So there were people going into the communities, there were uh, all kinds of institutions working through this, but the role that the university played in this process, in producing the knowledge that became available and match the political will of, of, of a movement and how those two things interse intersected, I think it's really crucial in understanding the whole process and what a school is able to do in this sort of long-term vision of producing knowledge for a, in a society that was really at risk of disappearing. I mean, there was really a lot of at stake. So and I know that is something really important for you, so maybe in a very brief manner you, yes. you might want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, in the 60s and in the 70s, in the universities, in the faculties of architecture of the city, the professors made uh, some works with the students along the river, uh, with the connections between the hills in the city with the city center, developing new dwellings and other um, uh, topics in the architecture. And the first space when those ideas were discussed were in the faculties of architecture in the city. And the professors of the faculties of architecture, um, with, her, with, his, with, them, uh, with the students and in, in his own architectural office, developed some ideas. 20 years ago, some of those professors went to the government to planning the city and to put in order and in the city those ideas that they worked first in the faculties of architecture. Right now the dynamic is that the professors of the faculties of architecture are working simultaneously, some professors simultaneously in the government and in the university. I am professor of architecture in the faculty of architecture in the Universidad Pontificia Bolivariana and the current major knows that my first job is to be a professor of the Faculty of Architecture. Without my job of professor, maybe we can't prove some ideas in our classrooms, in our labs with the students, with our groups of investigation, with another professors in our faculty that are always speaking about the new challenges for the city. For that, in this academic context, Maybe the best ideas, the most useful ideas, are emerging every day for the city. And not for the urban planning, developed for new materials, developed for new um, forms of uh, dwellings or new designs or in relation with another um, possibilities for improve the quality of the environmental situation of the cities in the faculties of architecture and managing the faculties of architecture uh, have right now a very, very special role in the city planning. So, this idea continue in, in different forms. We have been talking yesterday about Urbam, Francisco, the, the idea to found Urbam, the, the, the environmental and urban research center that I, today I'm, I am the director. We have been working in the first stages with, with Francisco and others. So, thinking that this, this connection between academy with friction with reality in relation to understand the problems and to activate and to expand the, the, the classrooms and to use the city like a live lab is really important and to keep the dialogue and the discussion in the city. And, um, and, uh, and this has to be as well with the origin of the politics and the transformation, the recent transformation in Medellin because, for example, Sergio Fajardo, the mayor where we have been working with, I, am, I was working with, for example, he was a professor. And a lot of people that arrived to the, the civic movement was as well and were <coughs> professors and researchers. I'm not saying that this is the reason because the, 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 the reality starts to be transformed. But this connection between, between knowledge and as well the understanding the condition of the society helps a lot. Yeah. 
And uh, so I think, I think the pedagogy as well has to change a lot. To, to understand how can we work with the reality by doing innovation and designing and exploring things and ideas and so on. So this could happen in both, both directions. But that connection helps a lot the process of managing as well. I think that the last thing perhaps to say is that like in, in Europe there is a public competition, open competition system that opens the space for everybody and one of the things that I feel very proud of is many of our students are in their 20s and 30s were the winners that actually built many of these projects. So there's a, there's a sort of reproduction of culture that yes. I think is important. Alejandro is an example. Yeah. When he was, he was doing his, his, his talk, He's our son. He, he showed, I don't know how old uh, was you before. Maybe older than today. <laughs> but maybe you, you won the first competition maybe in your 30s. 28? Yeah. 25. 25? Yes. Yeah. So what a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should leave it at that. Thank you very much. <laughs>